गुड मॉर्निंग इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टू मेन वेरिएंट्स ऑफ डी एस पैरामीटर्स दैट इज प्रोक्सीमल एंड डिजिटल वेरिएंट्स सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द मॉडिफाइड डी एच पैरामीटर्स विच आर ऑल्सो नोन एज प्रोक्सीमल वेरिएंट ऑफ द डी एच पैरामीटर्स सो इन दिस सेशन विल ट्राई टू सी द अदर वेरिएंट विच इज द नॉर्मल डी एच पैरामीटर्स विच आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज द डिजिटल वेरियंट एंड विल टेक अप वन एग्जाम्पल of a three link planar manipulator and try to develop the complete solution using analytical method and then we'll try to verify this using geometrical validation so this is what we had discussed in the last session regarding modified dh parameters where we know how to represent the transformation from ith link to i minus 1th link and that we have done with the help of uh, these four parameters alpha i minus 1 ai minus 1 theta i and di so out of these four parameters we have discussed that two are the link parameters and the last two are the joint parameters and out of the four parameters we know that three will remain fixed for a particular link joint pair and only one of them will be variable depending upon whether that particular joint is prismatic in nature or it is revolute in nature so then we have developed the final transformation matrix with the help of four frames that is ith frame to pth frame then pth to qth qth to rth and finally rth to i minus 1th frame transformation so that is the way and with this we can describe any point which is defined in the ith frame to uh, any point which is being described in the i minus 1th frame so that is the final transformation matrix which is a combination of uh, four transformation matrix and the final result is given like this way so that we have discussed in the last session so next comes the distal variant so the only difference over here is the placement of the frame so if you consider this link i so over here in the proximal variant the frame has been assigned over here there is the zi axis over here in the proximal variant this is the zi axis whereas in the distal variant this is the z i axis so for the link i you can see in the distal variant the frame has been assigned towards the end side of the link and in the proximal variant the frame has been assigned towards the base side that's the only difference so the process will also remain the same only difference is over here all the parameters are declared with respect to index i so we will follow the similar steps so this is the final transformation matrix and these are the two screw transformations as we have discussed earlier and this is the final transformation matrix which is the product of these four transformations so this one is the translation along the x axis by amount ai then we have the rotation about the x axis by amount alpha i followed by translation along the z axis by amount di and followed by the rotation about the z axis by theta so when we multiply all four of them in this sequence we will get the final result like this which is slightly different from what we have obtained in the proximal variant that's because of the frame assignment but you choose any method to solve the forward kinematics either using proximal variant or using distal variant if the base frame and the final frame is same then the end result using both the methods will be same that will prove in this example also so now we'll try to solve this example let's take three link planar manipulator where all the z axis are coming out of the plane of the board so first of all as i mentioned we have to identify the infinite lines so the first of the infinite line you can see pass through this point this shows the joint axis 1 this is the joint axis 2 and this is the joint axis 3 so then we have to identify the location of the frame so that we know if these are the two parallel lines so we know that this is the along the link length is a common perpendicular so this is the location of a uh, frame 1 and this is our direction of x1 axis and then finally this is the location of frame 3 and this is the direction of frame 3 x3 and finally we can say that the last frame which we assign at the tip frame the x direction will take along the previous frame so we'll take the x4 in the same direction as x3 and now we can also assign the x0 y0 frame which is the universal frame we have to assign the y axis so to define the y let's say y1 direction we have to curl our fingers from z1 to x1 z1 we know is vertically upwards so if you curl your finger from z1 to x1 the y1 will be perpendicular to our link 1 so this is the y1 direction and this is the angle theta 
similarly you have y2 is perpendicular to the second link y3 is perpendicular to the third link and similarly y4 so this is the first step the frame assignment the next step is we need to use the parameter definition and we have to develop the dh parameter table so let's try to see this so this is the definition of uh, all the four parameters which we have discussed already and then let's try to fill the table so my recommendation is always fill the table column wise because we need not to switch between the parameters so the first column says the link length so for index i this entry will be a0 and we know the first entry a0 is the distance from z0 to z1 along x0 so that we know both the frames are coincident so the first link length is 0 so then you have z1 to z2 along x1 so this is l1 link length 1 so then z2 to z3 along x2 so you have l2 and finally similarly you have l3 so this is the first column of uh, link lengths then we have the twist angles so it's very simple all the z axis are parallel all are vertically upwards so the link twist angles are all zero then the next is joint offsets so d1 index 1 is d1 so d1 is the distance from x0 to x1 along z1 so we know it's a planar robot there is no joint offset so all the joint offsets are zero also and finally we have the joint angle so let's try to understand first one is the theta one which is the angle from x0 to x1 measured along z1 so you can see this is the x0 direction x1 direction is this so we know along the z we have the counterclockwise angle theta one so then from x1 this is the direction of x1 to x2 we have this angle theta 2 and finally you have x2 to x3 you have this angle as theta 3 and finally the x3 to x4 so there is no movement over there that is a tip frame so that is zero so this is a typical dh parameter table using the proximal variant so this is what we have developed in the last slide manually so now let's try to see this is a table we have and this is the final transformation matrix using the proximal variant we have to now calculate all transformations from the tip to third link third to second second to first and first to the base link what we are supposed to do we'll take this first row which is marked at yellow in the table you can see so plug in all these values this is the result of this which shows the transformation from the first frame to the zeroth frame next we'll go to the row 2 so if you plug in the green row in this matrix we'll get this result 1t2 so we'll go to the next row 2t3 and then finally the last row of the table we have t3 4 so now if we multiply all these transformation matrix in the sequence we'll get this as the final result so let's try to understand these results analytically also where c123 represents cosine of the angle theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 and s123 represents the sine of the angle between theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 so let's draw the robot again the line diagram so over here you can see this is the first angle that's the second angle and that may be the third angle this is let's say angle theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 so this is the coordinates x and y let's say this is the x and y axis so now if we try to see all the rotations are with respect to the z axis so that's why this is the pattern of rotation about the z axis and the tip has eventually rotated by an amount theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 that's why we have the standard rotation about uh, the z axis cos of theta 1 2 3 minus sine sine and cosine this is the standard pattern and finally this is the location of the tip so let's try to see the if this is the length l1 this is the length l2 this is the length l3 so this is the projection which is called as l1 c1 and we know this angle is theta 1 then the angle with respect to the x axis is theta 1 plus theta 2 so this is l2 c12 and the last angle is 
the total angle is theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 with respect to x axis. So, the last is L3 C1 2 3. So, the total x axis is basically L1 C1 plus L2 C1 2 plus L3 C1 2 3. And similarly, you can draw the projections on the y axis. So, this will be the second entry. So, this is how we can analytically prove that uh, the result obtained after these four multiplications is correct. So now let's try to solve it with the help of uh, manual calculation. We can say we can prove it using geometry. So what we have done is instead of random values of theta, we have given some specific values. We have rotated this robot at a particular configuration by moving theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. So we'll have this uh, table again. So here you can see we have added one more column which is called as a home position. So this home position shows the location or you can say the configuration of the manipulator at the current instant. So here you can see the theta 1 angle at this current location. This is the angle between x0 and x1. So this angle is 0. Theta 2 is the angle between x1 and x2. That angle is 0. Theta 3 is the angle between x2 to x3. So this x2 to x3 is a clockwise rotation. So clockwise will mark it as minus 90. And finally the angle between x3 and x4 is marked at 0. So we will have the final result over here. So now let's try to plug in these values over here of all the thetas. So this is the entry cos 1, 2, 3. Summation of all three angles is minus 90. So cos of minus 90 we know is 0. So both entries will go to 0. And sine of minus 90 is minus 1. So minus of this is become plus 1. And this is minus 1. And we have cos of 1, 2, 3 is this entry goes to 0. So L1 C1 basically will be remain as L1 and L2 C1 2 still the angle is 0 so L1 plus L2 and the second entry which represents the y coordinate so L1 S1 uh, sine of theta 1 is 0 so this entry goes to 0. The second entry is L2 S1 2 which is the summation of theta 1 plus theta 2 again angle is 0 so the second entry is also 0 and the third is L3 S1 2 3 so which is the summation of all three angles that is minus 90 that becomes minus L3. Now let's try to see the final result this is like this way. So this is the same concept using the distal variant only thing is now all the indexes will have a reference AI alpha I. this you can just cross check that's the only difference the end result will remain the same whether you do it by proximal variant or you do it by a distal variant and let's try to see this geometrical validation with respect to pose 1 so this is what we have obtained all those steps which we have done in the last three four slides using the analytical method we can directly write those steps from the geometry so now let's try to understand how to write this result directly let's try to focus on the tip frame that is the fourth frame with respect to the base frame first we have to concentrate on the orientation part so the x4 is in the direction of negative of y0 and we know y0 we can write it as uh, 0 1 0 so negative of y is 0 minus 1 0 so then y4 over here is in the direction of x0 so x we know is 1 0 0 so we can write it directly all the z's are in the vertical direction so z4 is in the direction of z0 so we have 0 0 1 and now let's try to see the location of origin of fourth frame with respect to the zeroth frame along the x0 direction if this is x0 direction of universal frame we have l1 plus l2 this l1 this l2 so along the x direction this is l1 plus l2 then along the y direction so positive y is towards the left whereas the manipulator is towards the right so it's minus l3 and z all the z's are same so it's zero so let's try to see this so this is the final result and we can do the similar stuff using the distal variant so only difference over here the distal variant is one of the frame is less and instead of x4 x uh, y4 frame you are having x3 y3 frame 
everything will remain the same every concept will remain the same and the final result will is also the same so this is the same result using the distal variant which you can try using the nomenclature of distal variant next let's try to change the pose and let's try to see how this geometrical validation is valid so now we have rotated the manipulator to a different configuration in this pose final transformation t4 to 0 so this we can calculate again you can see the final frame the x4 basically is in the direction of x0 and both the directions are opposite so it's minus 1 0 0 so second is y4 is in the negative direction of y0 so 0 minus 1 0 and all the z's are parallel so z0 and z4 are in the same direction so we have 0 0 1 and now comes the final column which represents the location of origin of fourth frame with respect to the universal frame so again if we see in the x direction the value is l1 it goes upwards and l3 comes downwards so l1 minus l3 and in the y direction it's l2 and the l2 is in the negative of y direction so minus l2 so this is the result of 0 t4 transformation in pose 2 now we can also develop the intermediate transformations like let's say 2 t4 that is we are interested in finding out the transformation from the tip to the second frame so we know the x4 is in the direction of y2 negative of y2 so that makes 0 minus 1 0 then y4 is in the direction of x2 that makes 1 0 0 and all the z's are parallel so 0 0 1 and the final column represents the origin of frame 4 as seen from frame 2 considering frame 2 as the fixed frame or the universal frame so we can see along the x2 direction it is l2 the frame 4 is l2 units away and along the y2 direction it is l3 units downwards so minus l3 so this is the final result and the same thing can be achieved using the distal variant everything will remain the same all the results will remain the same so we'll stop here so thanks to ashutosh and arnav to make this uh, ppt thank you